and welcome to our meteorology segment. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash and Mash, here at Smash News Network, least busted name and news. We're starting things out looking at nullschool.net's wind maps. Here are the wind maps of the Western world. We're looking at surface winds right here, and we're going to switch this to the jet stream right after I note all of the odd wind patterns happening here in the North Atlantic. Strong winds surrounded by very calm winds in the turbulent area of the North Atlantic. Here are the jet streams of the Western world. Yowzers. Quite serious kinks in the jet stream here. We've even got portions of it blowing backwards a bit here over the central North Atlantic. Extreme meridional jet stream flow. Look at the north and southward patterns here. Some cold air being injected into the Great Lakes region. Rotating the Earth to the eastern portion of the planet. There are the jet streams of the eastern world, just as chaotic over there. And let's take a look at the surface winds over in the eastern portion of planet Earth as well. There are the surface winds of the eastern world. And continuing on to look at a real-time lightning maps, it's lightningmaps.org. We show it daily. It's usually integrated in the Daily Space Weather video, and today we've separated the Daily Space Weather, the Cosmology segment, and the Meteorology segment. We do have a playlist for our Meteorology segments located at youtube.com slash playlists, youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists is the location of that. And here at the Smash News Network, we are interested in things like facts as opposed to fraud and nonsense. Here are some facts as to where lightning is striking on a global scale. Lightningmaps.org could save your bacon. I use it when I hear thunder on the regs. And we don't have any terrestrial lightning in the U.S. right now, although some in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a NASA Goes Lightning Mapper. We're looking at about six hours of data here. Some heavy lightning there off of the coast of Florida. As well as some moving southeast over western Oklahoma there. The main lightning is located in southern Mexico right now. Next we're on windy.com and we're going to show you pressure maps. For some reason we've zoomed in at an abnormal location. Here are the current pressure maps, and I would note that the entire South Polar region is encased in low pressure, and the North Polar region is encased in high pressure. Let's advance this into the, let's do the GFS forecast today. Here is the GFS forecast for pressure at 12 noon Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow. Continuing on, I would invite all of our viewers to check out our own website, smashamash.com. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Visit our link, support our channel. Check out our forum. You can find Cosmology Forum, Earth and Geophysics, a free for all forum, general science, and more. You can also find a link to our Red Bubble Shop. That's the Smash O merch link. It'll take you to this page. And I'm currently wearing the Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera socks. Please tell your friends and foes about the merch. It's very high quality. Let's talk about how hot the planet is. Check it out, we've got some more data for you here. Look at that, folks. Look at how hot Antarctica is. What a great example of how hot, oh my God, Antarctica. It's so hot that it's cold. So here is the 30-year temperature average, which is this center line here. And you can see we are like two and a half standard deviations below the normal temperature. It's, oh, I don't know, 11 degrees Celsius below normal at Antarctica. Apparently, in Antarctica, it's now so hot that it's cold, and people are very concerned that the Antarctic ice sheet is going to melt. Let me just talk about the Antarctic ice sheet. The Antarctic ice sheet formed at about 33 million years ago when planet Earth was three degrees Celsius warmer than it is today. So let's bring up this graphic again. The Antarctic Surface Temperature Tracker, part of Global Cryosphere Watch. Wow, it's very hot down there. Oh my God, it's so hot that it's 11 degrees below, 11 degrees Celsius below the 30-year average. 
and it's like two, maybe three standard deviations above normal, I mean below normal. Antarctica, so hot that it's cold, and complete climate hacks and frauds would like to convince you that, oh my God, Antarctica's going to melt. Here's the U.S. Doppler radar map. We see some heavy rains over southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, eastern Iowa, and southern Oklahoma. Also Maine getting some heavy rains. Here's the cloud layer. And here's the water vapor map. We'll rock that back. Again, there's the cloud layer. There's the U.S. Doppler radar map. And if you're looking at the Doppler radar and wondering why it looks so anomalous, break out the NASA GOES interactive weather satellite water vapor map. It will help you out. For example, check out these systems over Oklahoma. We're going to zoom in on that region. We're going to zoom in on that region just to show you how beneficial it is to know what the water vapor is doing. So you may look at the Doppler radar here in that area and go, what's going on? How come the storms are moving to the southwest? Well, the water vapor map is going to give you a great idea of why that is. And it has to do with dry air pushing the moisture around. This air here is much more massive than this air here and is in control of where that water vapor moves. Yes, it's true, folks. Dry air is more massive than moist air. And that's today's meteorology segment. Thanks for tuning in. Again, don't forget to check out the rest of our videos, youtube.com slash smash mash slash playlists. Leave us a comment, press like, and share. And we'll see you next time here at the Smash News Network. Least busted. Name and news.